Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for night two of this year's virtual open house. My name is Jennifer White and I work with the undergraduate student recruitment office of the St. John's campus. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. This event has been a valuable addition to what we've provided over the past four years and will give you insight into the programs and student experience at Memorial University, regardless of whether you may be located tonight, um, but it's an opportunity to allow everyone to join us from the comfort of their home, ask questions and learn more about Memorial University. Before we start with our student panel, which is the first part of this evening's event, I'd like to begin our virtual open house with a territory acknowledgement. If you're not familiar with this practice, territory acknowledgements are a way to share space with Indigenous peoples through the weaving of Indigenous protocols into university procedures. Territory acknowledgements prompt us to think about re the relationships between Indigenous peoples and institutions. We acknowledge that the lands on which Memorial University's campuses are situated are in the traditional territories of diverse Indigenous peoples. And we acknowledge with respect the diverse histories and cultures of the Beothic, Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. We strive for respectful relationships with all the peoples of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation and honor this beautiful land together. I'd like to encourage attendees to think of the ways in their life and work may contribute to decolonization and reconciliation. While students at Memorial in the future, I encourage you to learn more so that you can recognize and acknowledge the pre-colonial history of this province. If you joined us last night um, for uh, any of our sessions um, or attended one of the sessions to learn more about our other campuses of Memorial University, um, welcome back. If you didn't have the opportunity to attend yesterday, don't worry. Uh, you will be able to check back to the landing page for this event in a week or so, and the recordings will be available from that first night um, so that you can uh, learn more about the admissions process from our recruitment team and uh, academic um, admissions officers and also uh, learn more about our other campuses where you can study undergraduate programs. Tonight and tomorrow night, we move on to sessions from our 10 academic units. This year, we've also included two new sessions. Uh, the first, which is happening tonight in this room after our student panel, uh, covers information that'll be helpful to any student during your transition to post-secondary studies. The second new uh, session we've added this year is happening tomorrow night, and it's designed for those that are still exploring academic options and what they might need to know more about uh, to help in that decision making process. So we'll have someone from our, our career development office as well as our academic advising center in that session to answer your questions. Um, so over the next two nights, as I said, we will be having uh, also going through all sessions for all of our academic units. Um, this evening, uh, we'll start at, uh, after our student panel with um, two other sessions, one for the um, faculty of business and the other for um, the uh, Faculty of Science, and then later this evening, we will hear from our School of Music, the School of Human Kinetics and Recreation, and our Faculty of Engineering. The layout for the entire program is going to be um, on our landing page, and we will put up the link for that landing page several times, as you may want to change rooms from uh, one session to another. But first, to get us kicked off this evening, uh, we're going to actually uh, invite three students to join me. So we have Ava, Brian, and Kathleen. And they can turn on their microphones or cameras. And we'll start by having each of you introduce yourself. Please let us know your name, your program of study, uh, where you're from, and if there's any other uh, information about what you're involved in on campus as well. And we'll just kind of go alphabetical order. So if I'll get uh, Ava uh, to start us off uh, introducing herself. So my name's Ava McGraw. I am in the co-op version of kinesiology here at Mon. I'm in my fourth year and I'm from St. John's. 
Excellent. Brian, can you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Brian. I'm also a co-op student for the Business Bachelor of Commerce program. I'm in my fourth year and I'm an international student from Tanzania. I just moved to St. John's around two years ago. Great. And Kathleen? Hi, everyone. My name is Kathleen. I'm in my fourth year of mechanical engineering and I went to high school here in St. John's and I've lived here my whole life. Excellent. Thank you. So there's lots of experience here, student experience, uh, students that have been on campus for a while. Um, so if there's any questions that you have that you might want to ask these students, um, please put them in the chat. I'll keep an eye on that. But we do have a couple of prepared questions just to sort of get everybody warmed up this evening. And I'm going to start. Um, by asking each of our students, um, based on the saying, I wish I knew then what I know now, uh, can you give some advice for our incoming students? And we'll kind of go in the same order, Ava, if you want to get us uh, started off with that. Yeah, so um, one of the things I struggled with in my first year was knowing when to take adequate breaks. Now, I started during the pandemic, so all of my classes were online. Um, so that became easier when my classes were in person, which most of yours will be. But um, it's very difficult from the transition to from high school to university, if you did very well in high school, to see those grades start to plummet. It's not a reflection of who you are, how hard you're working. So it's just, I wish I would have told myself it's okay to take breaks because when I started taking them, I started actually doing better in school. Great advice. Uh, Brian, uh, is there anything that you wish you knew when you first started as a student that you know now that may have helped? Um, yeah, uh, similar to Ava, I also started uh, in 2020, so it was in the pandemic, so it, I had to shift from an in-person environment to a more online environment, so having to cope with that was a bit strenuous. But my biggest advice to give students that I was bothering me in my first year was you don't, you shouldn't feel the need to rush or have like a clear set path for something that you have in mind. Because like, as with most things, as you just build it up with time, as you build it up, as you get to, I guess, build like a sense of actualization of what you want to do as your time as a student, you'll gradually just get to understand your like the set path that you have for yourself you won't figure everything out within the first year and just leave your options open more so excellent great advice for sure kathleen is there something that you wish you'd known about when you were starting as a new student um i think um i probably wish i could have told myself four years ago that you know everybody there's been many people who have done my program before I did, so I'm not the only one who has felt confused or maybe a little bit lost in whether it's if this was the right thing for me to do or even what courses to take because it can be really confusing trying to figure out the credits and stuff. So if you have a friend or a sibling or a family member in the program, or even if you don't know anybody talking to somebody in you know, your program's office who could connect you or even recommend or give you, you know, a more, per month small compared to other schools. So you can get that personalized conversation of what courses you need or what's best for you. Awesome. That's really, uh, really great advice. I think one of the things that we repeatedly say, it's almost like our mantra in the uh, recruitment office with all of us that work here is um, ask us questions. It's literally our job <laughs> to answer your questions. Make sure you're not in any doubt about your way forward um, and make sure that, you know, if there's something that's on your mind, then there's probably 10 other students or 100 other students that have that same question. So make sure that, um, you know, that you're you're getting those answers. And if we don't know the answers, we know someone that will know the answers. So always reach out anytime. Okay, so I do know a little bit that a lot of you did start, or, or I think all three of you did start um, when things were online. So maybe the next question should be worded, how did you handle the transition to on campus for the first semester you were there. Uh, Brian, do you wanna start us off by answering that question? So the first time you were here on campus, what was that like for you? 
Um, so it was pretty drastic because not only did I shift to from an online setting, which I had already gotten used to for like a year to an in-person setting, but also just a change in environment from where I was previously. But I already knew beforehand, before coming here, that Memorial had a very strong and tight-knit community. So just getting the opportunity to meet other people, share ideas, go to classes together, um, it I want to say it like excited me more than it did worry me. So that wasn't necessarily an issue on my part. Excellent. Yeah. It was nice to be around more people at that time, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're locked up with COVID, mm -hmm. getting to meet people again does it. It is pretty exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, I know, I believe uh, both Ava and Kathleen, did you say you were both from the St. John's area? Right. So were you familiar with campus before you started studying here at Memorial? Yeah. Okay. I mean, so the library, the... I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of our lots of our local students do do uh, you know have an opportunity to come on campus before they start studying. Um, but Ava, what was it like for you first coming and being on campus and in that uh, in that environment and, and in your program? Um, so I'm in HKR and that faculty tends to be a lot smaller than some of the other ones like science for example is I know my sister's in that and it's just a massive faculty um so my class sizes were mostly about 40 people so it was really nice to go to at class like actually go to class see people and then where it was smaller it was great to make new friends make new connections our profs are also very easy to talk to so that was nice seeing someone's actual face. Um, and I also made sure to go to our like school society's events. I went to our faculty study room and that was just another great way to meet new people where I didn't have that opportunity when classes were online. Perfect. What about you, Kathleen? Your program is a little bit bigger. Yeah, so I just remember, I guess we're, yeah, already like we kind of said, it was really exciting just to see people um, after COVID, um, but that, that transition, like, again, it can be, you know, a little bit scary, a little bit nerve wracking. I mean, it's a much bigger campus than any high school. Um, I mean, that's any transition from high school to university, I guess, but, um, just really like leaning into the more excited feeling. I'm sure everybody will have to, you know, meet new people and, um, go to orientation events or things that you're, uh, program is having, like really trying to lean into that uh, side of, you know, starting at a new school um, was really fun. And um, you want to just avail of all those opportunities that exist. And because it's not weird, it's not cringy. It's really, it's really, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And it can make, it, it makes going to school so much better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, Kathleen, since you just answered the last question, maybe we can start us off with the next one. Is there any supports and services? You mentioned Welcome Weeks, but any other supports and services that you use um, and how they may have benefited you during the course of your program so far? Uh, you, you cut out a little bit for me, but I think I got the gist of the question. Okay. Um, in engineering specifically, um, it has like one of the best engineering centers or I don't I don't know what I'm comparing it to but I, it's just fabulous like every single course you can that you're doing in your first year of engineering you can get help with at the engineering one success center it is just for engineering one students and I wish I used it more when I was in my first year um there's multiple tutors there that are you know not experts but are really well diverse and and uh educated in these courses and they're there just to help engineering students in their first year it is awesome <laughs> yeah and there's quite a few of those help centers as well around the uh, around the university um, the faculty of business has a very strong help center as well as well as career resources and many of our academic units um, Ava was there anything um, any kind of supports and services that you'd like to specifically mention that you found were helpful 
Yeah, so the my first year of my program was more so general courses, so I had to do the general sciences and English courses, so I availed of both the Mon Writing Center, and I still use that to date to help me with um, any writing projects now that are a little bit daunting, I want to have someone else read over, as well as the Mon Chemistry Health Center, I only did the first two chemistry courses, but they they saved me when they were very helpful. You could go in, they, now they wouldn't show you exactly how to do the practice questions, but if you were stuck with something on an assignment, they would help you get to at least the first step, which was made it much less overwhelming. Absolutely. And all of these uh, help centers, including the writing center that we're talking about tonight, um, you know, they're, they're readily available. It, you know, it's not even, um, you know, so much about booking appointments, but with, I know with the writing center, it's helpful to plan ahead. If your assignment is due tomorrow, you may want to, you know, uh, you may not have the opportunity to get the, all the help you could get from them. Um, but it's also all like, there's no additional cost to it. And it's lots of times it is student helping students so senior students that are in the help centers and and staff members that are well versed in the the coursework that you're doing as well so they know what you've been through they've been there themselves many of them and always available to help with your coursework Brian is there anything that you've tapped into um, any supports or services that you've found that has been beneficial to you with your either early transition or even at this point in your program um, so most of like the general, like the services that I used came well after because my first few years I was doing general courses and accumulating credit hours. And it wasn't until recently when I did get my admission, when I did apply for admission into the co-op program. So after the fact, I did find um, careers, like the career center, career services to be very helpful in regards to helping students build a um, good career path job findings and resume building, as well as business seminars, which help students in constructing resumes and constructing, you know, like a good foundation in order to secure decent and well-paying jobs outside Memorial. Yes, there's certainly uh, lots of help available there for those that are doing uh, co-op programs, either a required part of your program or an optional part of your program. So it's always good to uh, let students know about that. Um, well, Brian, why don't you get us started then on the next part, since you did come from a little further away <laughs> than Ava and Kathleen, how did you meet new people? How did you get to know people um, either in your program or in general at the university when you first arrived? Um, I just talked to people around, like just approached them because, yeah, the like, the community in Memorial is very welcoming. It's very, yeah, it's very welcoming in a sense that I've never really felt afraid to just walk up to someone and ask for help or just introduce myself or getting to know people. Another good way is um, getting involved around campus, just participating in events, volunteering. And that's a very good way to get to know a lot of people across many different fields, just making new friends along the way. Yeah, there's lots to be involved in. Uh, Ava, how about you? Um, you know, getting to know people in your program, it didn't sound like it'd be too difficult with the, you know, HKR, the School of H Human Kinetics and Recreation being a, um, a smaller populated program class size wise. But did you sort of branch out and start meeting people outside your program as well? Yeah, so I was actually on a sports team for my first year of university. It was a club sports team, so we were allowed to practice during the pandemic, but I found that to be a great way to get some exercise in, build some social connections, and then uh, find senior students as well, where I was in my first year. They're in a bunch of different programs, but you know, we'd have our practice time, but afterwards, like one of the girls on my team was a TA, and she would help me with assignments and that kind of stuff. Now she wasn't my TA, but just, she was doing her <laughs> PhD at the time. So I was like, how do I read this article? So it was just a great way to find senior students and an easier way to approach them if they're a teammate kind of thing. 
Yeah. It's great with the, um, you know, the either the academic societies or other ways that you can actually meet students that are further along in their program or even, you know, doing master's programs because they, they can be a great help with understanding how it's all going to come together with your degree or uh, even, you know, a student a year ahead of you, what their classes are like. It's very insightful for sure. Kathleen, uh, what about you? How did you get to know other people outside of maybe friends that you had that were already uh, attending Memorial from St. John's? Sorry, could you say that again? <laughs> sure. <laughs> How did you get to know or meet new people, um, you know, beyond the students that maybe you knew prior to uh, coming into university since you are you are from St. John's? Yeah, so um, with the Engineering Society, which I'm now on, but even when I was in my first year and my second year, um, the Society has and for those who don't know, like uh, MUN societies are basically like student council. So our student council would have events pretty much almost every single weekend. So they're like very open invitation, trying to get as many people can go really. So we have hockey games, soccer games, bus crawls. We have a D-Day every semester. We have wet and dry events to make sure that everybody feels comfortable um, going. And those are just such great ways to meet people. And it starts right from the first weekend of the semester and goes right until after final exams. And something else with the co-op program is that you're working with your classmates. So that's a really good way to meet people um, and get really close with people as well because you'll be working with them every day. So you meet people really quickly. And I've had, I know my entire class now fairly well after three and a half years just by going to these events and, you know, you're studying with them all the time too. Absolutely. I was um, guiding a tour today through the library and I, you know, thought back to my days in those group study rooms in the library and just trying to, you know, I don't know, misery loves company sometimes when you're cramming for an exam or just trying to get through a difficult part of your coursework and, and getting a study room or finding some space to get together with other students can be so helpful because I think uh, everybody grasps concepts differently so what you're struggling with someone yeah, else might absolutely. have already fully understood yeah yeah so we do have a, a few minutes left um there isn't any questions that have appeared in the uh chat but i'm just gonna s okay there's someone's asking sort of a general question and we'll um We'll get an answer to them now just in a few minutes. Um, but when I think about, you know, chatting with students and advice that that current students can hand on, maybe we'll go and give each of you a minute or so just to sort of talk about what you feel like would be really good advice for anybody new that's coming into their academic program for the first time or considering Memorial um, as to do their academic program. Uh, Ava, do you want to start us off? What words of advice would you have as a, a, a senior student to students that are thinking about or on, on their way to coming to Memorial? Um, one of the biggest pieces of advice I could give was don't ever hesitate to ask for help. Um, I am a work term student and one of the biggest things that I'm proud of myself for doing is asking for my own work term placement, then continuing to ask, continuing to ask for more um opportunity within those jobs so i've really built myself up throughout my degree but i know that wouldn't have happened if i didn't seek out these opportunities myself and it took a while to become co as confident as i am now doing so but it just clicked with me one day the worst thing someone's going to tell me is no and then i'll move on and i'll try to ask someone else and the same thing goes for asking for help with assignments asking other students in the hallway for help if you need like oh where's the directions no one's going to mind at mon we're all pretty kind pretty genuine we'll help whenever we can so just don't ever be scared to ask someone for help if you're that's something you're not confident doing awesome advice for sure brian uh what about you any words of advice as a, a fourth year student uh for our future students that are here tonight um general advice i would say I, it kind of does connect in like the thing that was bothering me as a first year student as well, but I just came to develop onwards up until now was that I always believed that I had everything set 
and everything was already decided from the get-go that I got into university for the first time. And I guess in a sense that always stressed me out because I always had this feeling that I was not meeting certain goals at certain periods, or I always felt like I could do better. And I've just learned over time that there's just there's so many pathways, especially going into university. It's just a whole new world. It's a whole new exposure and you'll just gradually pick up new things. You'll pick up new interests. You might find yourself switching programs and you just find like a sense of happiness that you may not see right now, but you may see down the line, like in a year or two. And it's just, I guess the best thing I could say is just keep it easy to yourself as a first year student. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't overstress yourself because just like as with most things, it just, it just comes down to time and you'll be very well accustomed to everything down the line. That's really awesome advice. And it certainly sounds like, um, you know, it, passing that kind of advice on to future students is, is really don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> you know, it does take time. It is a big transition. There is lots of help out there, um, but you do actually have to have, have to go through that process and, um, and don't be too hard on yourself, you know, when you're doing it and know that maybe what you thought you were going to be studying all along is, um, you know, might not be the best option for you. So seek out some great advice and really see how how you know what area of study might be the right one for you because everybody's path is different absolutely excellent advice thanks brian uh kathleen do you want to finish us off do you have any words final words of advice for future uh universe memorial university students yeah i'll try and keep it general to like any program um i think like in the media and stuff there's, you know, even past like 10 years, people like to crap on Mun a little bit, but Mun is like, there's a lot of opportunities for you here, especially like if you lean into the fact that compared to, you know, some universities in Ontario or even in the Atlantic provinces, like we are one of the smaller ones. So le really lean into the fact that you can be close with your classmates, be close with your prof. I'm on a first name, first name basis with the Dean. And these are great um, opportunities for you that can really make life at Mon like super enjoyable and can help you um during your time at Mon. and even to add on to what Brian said like I, one of the things that I've been saying the past couple of years is that it all comes out in the wash so if you <laughs> like find yourself like first couple weeks especially in engineering one like I think everybody fails their first midterm and they're like you know maybe a little bit of imposter syndrome or just feeling like really down in the dumps or whatever you want to call it, but it truly does come all out in the wash and you'll, you know, end up succeeding in your own way or finding your path or you'll stay on the path and just realize that that one midterm like really did uh, do a whole lot in the end to you. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stick with it. Persevere. You know, it, it does, uh, it does get a little easier the more you get accustomed to what's uh, what the pace and, and the scheduling is like. That's really awesome. Thank you guys so much for the uh, the insight into life as a student and, and some of your advice as senior students. Um, if any of you are interested in learning a little bit more about HKR, Ava will be joining us uh, in an hour from now within the session. That'll be in room two. And uh, we have Kathleen who's joining us for the engineering session, um, which will be in uh, just coming up. Um, I actually, I think that one might be in room two. Anyway, you will be able to get, get yourself back to the landing page. We have the uh, link that is there in the chat for the landing page. And in just a few minutes, we are going to have um, three sessions. So in this room, room one, we're going to have uh, Jen Dion is going to be our moderator and or one of our panelists along with Julia Halfyard, and they're going to be talking about transition supports and services. And then in room two, we are going to have a um, 
information from uh, the Faculty of Science. So any students that are interested in majors within the Faculty of Science or the, fac the Bachelor of Science degree program. And then room three is going to be for the uh, students interested in uh, the Faculty of Business Administration. So um, stay with us. And uh, if you need to um, go out into another room, just use the link that's there in the uh, chat and you can pop out and then make sure that you're into the, the right room where your next session will be beginning in just one or two minutes. Okay, thank you very much again, Ava, Kathleen and Brian for joining us and good luck with the stu your studies for the rest of the semester. Thank you.